We have with us today Dr. Peter Lutez, the Dean of the National School of, a Tropical, of Tropical Medicine at Baylor. He's also President of the Sabin Vaccine Institute and Endowed Chair in Tropical Pediatrics at Texas Children's Hospital. Mr. Chairman, Representative Castor, and members of the subcommittee, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. I'm Dean of the National School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor College of Medicine. I also head a product development partnership that makes neglected tropical disease vaccines that the big pharmaceutical companies won't make because they're vaccines for the diseases of the poorest people. For my remarks about Zika today, I want to focus on my perspective living and working in the Gulf uh, Coast of the United States and our unique vulnerability to Zika epidemics and why I believe that this spring or summer Zika could begin affecting uh, pregnant women living in economically distressed uh, areas of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida, and why I worry that by the end of this year we could see microcephaly cases uh, appearing uh, on the Gulf Coast. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about some of the hurdles in vaccine development uh, if there's time. The reason I'm concerned particularly about the Gulf Coast is because the Gulf Coast is unique and that it's the only part of the United States with the possible exception of Tucson, Arizona that has the Aedes aegypti mosquito. That's the mosquito that's now mostly responsible for transmission uh, all over Latin America and the Caribbean. So it's Aedes aegypti that we mostly have to be concerned about. But my other reason I'm concerned about the Gulf Coast, and one not really being talked about enough, is extreme poverty. I mean, the reason why we we're seeing Zika in Pernambuco State and Recife in Brazil is because that's the poorest area, one of the poorest areas of Brazil. It is the epicenter, not just of Zika, but all of Brazil's neglected tropical diseases. It's where we see lymphatic filariasis. It's where we see schistosomiasis. And the reason there's so much Zika there is when you, you can, and it's, it doesn't take much to understand, it. You can just view one of the poor communities. You see no window screens, holes in the window screens, but it's also the environmental degradation around the area. You see discarded tires, you see plastic containers filled with water, and all of those factors combine to make the perfect storm why Pernambuco is uh, such a deadly place in terms of uh, microcephaly cases uh, and Zika. It's the same reason why I'm very worried about Haiti. I know we're mostly focusing on the United States, but I'd just like to make the point that I think Haiti is going to be decimated uh, by Zika. The UNICEF, est UNICEF estimates there's 264,000 pregnant women uh, every year in Haiti. So we could be looking at more than 100,000, maybe 200,000 pregnant women with Zika in their first or second trimester. We could be looking at tens of thousands of cases of microcephaly uh, in Haiti in a country that basically has no health system. So this is a humanitarian catastrophe that's unfolding in front of our eyes, and I really don't see any significant global action right now happening in Haiti. And it's the reason I'm particularly worried about uh, the U.S. Gulf Coast. Uh, dengue actually caused outbreaks in Houston in 2003, 2004, and 2005. That was work done by our National School of Tropical Medicine. The reasons are clear. We have Aedes aegypti. But where this is most happening are in the poor areas of, of Houston. So the historic uh, African-American wards, like the Fifth Ward in Houston, where I can take you there just a minute off the highway. This is not hard to find. And what I'll show you are dilapidated housings with no window screens, holes in the window screens. You'll see discarded tires all along the side of the road uh, filled with organic debris and water. And, and, and the Aedes aegypti mosquito likes nothing more than uh, discarded tires along the side of the road. All right now, our Harris County uh, Mosquito Control Division is finding Aedes aegypti mosquitoes. Those numbers are going to start to climb uh, beginning in April uh, and into May. And uh, I'm quite worried that we won't learn that there's going to be a Zika outbreak until we start seeing microcephaly cases uh, towards the end of the year. So what do we need to do about this? First of all, I think the U.S. government needs a more active role in coordinating what's going on in, in, in Haiti or what's not going on in Haiti, working with the Organization of American States and WHO. Remember, this is a disease we can fight. Between 1947 and 1962, we eradicated the Aedes aegypti mosquito from the Western Hemisphere, or for most of Latin America. We did it by old-fashioned mosquito control programs and being aggressive by draining uh, water, water sources. 
the Aedes aegypti mosquito was eradicated in 18 uh, uh, Latin American countries and resulted in dramatic reductions in dengue and yellow fever. Equally important, we need a coordinated response to combat the threat of Zika on the Gulf Coast. Uh, this means uh, surveillance of uh, mosquitoes and Zika detection. Beyond mosquito control, we need to collect the garbage. We need to get rid of the discarded tires and standing water in poor neighborhoods, provide pregnant women living in poverty with screens, adequate screens for their homes. This approach goes beyond the health sector and beyond the remits of the CDC. It could require involvement of housing and urban development, and EPA, uh, even Homeland Security. Remember, even if a few babies are born with microcephaly on the Gulf Coast, it will be talked about in the same context as Katrina. It will be talked about in the same context as the BP uh, uh, oil spills. And so therefore, I urge this committee to aggressively pursue policies to protect that region.